Hi, this is Shane Davis from Youngstown State University here with Figured Out Baseball. Today we're going to be doing a follow-up to my five-part series on proper catch play. If you haven't seen it yet, I would recommend you stopping now, coming back to this video, and going and checking out that series. If you have seen it and need a, need a refresher, after we're done here, go and check those videos out. If you remember in the fifth video, when we were talking about working back in, there came a point where we backed off on trying to throw hard and started to focus more on our mechanics and command and control of our pitches. Um, we do that in what is called a flat ground, where we are literally on flat ground. Uh, we could do these every day when we play catch. The reason we can't throw off the mound is because of that decline and it exponentially increases the forces of gravity and the weight of our body as we start working down. And that is why you feel tend to feel a little bit sore after you throw versus just after you pitch versus just when you play catch. The focus of this drill is for the most part, now we can modify it, is fastball command down in the zone. Even at my level, if you can't throw strikes, if you can't command your fastball, you're gonna to struggle to have success. Uh, this drill is designed first and foremost to work on that fastball command. In order to do it, we need either a bucket of baseballs or a single baseball, depending on whether or not we have a partner. If we don't have a partner, we need a net. And then two cones, pylons, buckets, anything we can find, uh, plus a plate, which is optional. If you don't have a plate, recognize that the plate is set, the white part of the plate is 17 inches wide. The blacks are each about half an inch, which adds up to about 18 inches for the total black to black on the plate. Uh, you could set those two up. Since we are working on the corners, you could set them anywhere from 15 to 20 inches apart. Reason 20 inches is okay if we're a little bit wider than the actual plate is part of having command, which is throwing the ball where you want it to go, is being able to miss just off the plate. And that's that kind of waste pitch that you talk about and hear about and everybody kind of misinterprets as missing by a foot and a half. It's usually somewhere between four to six inches off where we can work on those pitches occasionally. But for today, I have a plate. Now, I will say if you have a partner, I'd recommend the partner to get in his, get in a squat, preferably have a cup and mask, and stay in the middle of the plate just using his glove as the target. Um, also, if you are throwing to a partner, I'd recommend something lighter than the pylons that I'm using because uh, the pylons might redirect the baseball, whereas a cone or something a little bit lighter, ball's going to hit it and just move the cone versus changing direction of the baseball again trying to protect ourselves a little bit the point of this drill is going to be to try to clip try to clip the top of the cones with my pitches um, and then working through once I feel command of that I can start working on spinning breaking balls throwing sliders change-ups whatever we want a little bit uh, modification I usually make for a change-up is going to be just to try to get the ball between the cones on the plate and that way we can work on just being down in the zone with our changeup because nobody wants changeups belt high. But for today, I'm going to show you how, how we throw fastballs with it. So you could work either out of the stretch or the wind. Today, I'm going to be working out of the stretch and I'm just going to try to clip each cone low and away. You could do this as much as you want until you feel comfortable with it. So out of the stretch, I'm going to start aiming low and away to a right-handed batter. Come set. Now I hit the cone with my first try. So I'm just gonna leave that and I'm gonna move the low and away to a left-handed batter. Two more tries. Okay, I didn't hit that. Should I have hit it? I would stop, go pick up the cones, put them back, and keep going. A couple other things to keep in mind here. We can do this anywhere from about 20 feet short of where our mound would be to our mound's length. So for a high school player, you could do it anywhere from 40 to 60 feet. What we're trying to do is isolate our mechanics and our command 
in working on our pitches and kind of take out of the equation the trying to throw hard. Uh, you do want to be firm, you do want to get something behind your pitches, but we don't want to get to a point where we're overthrowing here. We're trying to harness everything in and work on command, which is throwing the ball where we want it to go. And then the other point with it, if you notice, when I missed, I was missing small. If you've ever seen the movie American Sniper, they talk about aim small, miss small. If I'm aiming for a little speck, a stationary target, the odds on me, if I do miss it, missing by a ton, are going to be slim. If I'm aiming small, I'm probably going to miss in that general area. And that's why it is okay to miss in this drill, to not hit the cones. Because I am focused on a stationary target that's not going to move. It's going to give me real-time feedback. If that cone is not getting taller, not getting wider, it is staying the same size. So I have something to actually stationary, something, hold on, I'm going to go back. So I have something stationary to actually provide me with reinforcement on all of the throws that I make. This is Shane Davis from Youngstown State University. I appreciate you joining me with Figure It Out Baseball. Please go check out my other videos pertaining to playing catch, and I will see you again soon. Thank you.